just lastly, before we wrap up on this topic, we just uh, wanted to touch on local design considerations for um, trucks. So there is truck traffic generation rates. Um, again, in the same sort of um, manuals that you've been looking at for ge uh, generation rates for other parts of this course so far. And again, this could probably come in quite handy for um, project one. So, you know, guidelines in regards to courier vans, light rigid trucks, heavy rigid trucks. So probably those three might actually help you in project one, but even also articulated trucks. Um, ultimately, it helps design areas for the needs of uh, particular trucks because, you know, they need to actually have access and space as you'll find out in the following slides. Some of the uh, network strategies for local areas, well, we, we want to design for obviously access, amenity, livability, and um, as a result, we tend to narrow roads, have smaller roundabouts, put chicanes in there, obviously um, plantings, trees, um, gardens, etc. But the problem is we still need trucks to enter. Well, we also need public transport to enter. But this is a tracking topic today, but you know, emergency vehicles, garbage trucks, you know, deliveries, construction. If we design for the local resident, who uses their, their car or their bike or on foot, then how the trucks actually enter. So we need to balance the considerations of all, part, all parties, excuse me. Roundabouts in particular can be a um, particular issue. Um, as you probably remembered from road engineering, normally on a curve, super elevation is on the outside of the curve. And as a result, sometimes um, if, if the truck doesn't uh, take the roundabout carefully or of course hasn't been designed you can see what's happened there in that picture from a roundabout in New Zealand um, and again drain the drainage that can actually impact have an impact on the that the I guess the practical application of trucks actually accessing the roundabout so as it says there um, roundabouts tend to have adverse crossfall for drainage and visibility to Central Island so if a truck does tend to take the curve too quickly they can unfortunately tip over other road design issues will include uh, intersection ge geometry, but um, physical hazards. So, you know, there's been a lot of cases in um, Melbourne recently of, um, you know, um, trucks that are too high actually trying to go under bridges that, you know, they're not designed for, or of course actually, you know, hitting poles, overhanging trees, or even just when they go around um, corners. Because you've got to remember when a truck goes around the corner, whilst the prime mover you know, the engine area where the driver sits was that might go out wide, the actual trailer actually um, cuts the corner uh, a lot closer to the corner. So as you can see there on the illustration on the right. Osroads does provide some design guidelines for intersections in respect to um, um, truck design. And I suggest that in your own time, you either look through this table here on this slide or of course the Osroads guide itself. But again, could actually assist you for project one. One of the important things, of course, and we will be looking at this more in the activity because these can have a big impact on intersection design, of course, is the, um, the turning circle for um, trucks as opposed to cars. So you can actually see there that a car requires a 6.3 metre radius, whilst a V double requires a 30 metre radius, and that's when it's doing a speed of 20 to 30 kilometres an hour. Again, I'm just referring back to information that's in the Osrage guide, so I won't go into this in great detail. But I am the problem, of course, with trucks, as I've talked talked about in just a couple of slides ago, is this concept of off-tracking, which is where that the turning circle that the actual prime mover takes is not the same turning circle that, of course, the trailer or trailers take, because they actually take a, a smaller um, turning circle. So a, as you can see here, you've got a B-double, on the left side of the screen, you've got a B-double with a 30 metre radius, um, doing, and the B-double is doing about a 20 to 30 kilometre per hour. But then on the um, image on the right hand of the screen, We've got a B double with a 12.5 metre radius, doing five kilometres an hour, but notice the impact of off tracking. Again, the trailer takes a short, has a shorter turning circle than, of course, the prime mover. Um, par parking and loading, of course, is a concern. So, again, we've often seen this site here on this illustration at most shopping centres where you know the truck is inevitably blocking both motorists who are trying to travel along the roadway or of course access car parks. So I guess the priority in such situations is to get trucks off the road as quickly as possible where we can separate trucks and pedestrians. So again, touching back on what we've learned about pedestrians a few weeks ago. Trucks of course have many blind spots, um, which of course is problematic for both pedestrians and cyclists and to a lesser extent car drivers. And you really wanna try and avoid 
making trucks um, reverse where possible. Unless, of course, they're in the safety of a loading dock where they can guarantee that they probably won't have anyone intersecting their path. And this slide here gives you a perfect example where the truck doesn't naturally have to reverse uh, back into unload its goods. But of course, in this sort of area, you can hopefully assume that you won't have any other vehicles or pedestrians uh, interfering with your movement. So when you do have urban or constrained areas, it's always good if you can have um, you can have off street access, but sometimes you can't have to have and loading zones have to be on the street. In these cases, then you just need to make sure that there's sufficient width and length for the truck. For larger facilities such as shopping centres, then the um, loading docks, as this picture illustrates, is probably your best approach. So just in terms of wrapping up today's uh, lecture on trucking, or pre-recorded lecture on trucking, it's important to remember that trucking networks help improve the efficiency of freight, but um, many of their movements do actually conflict both with residents and sometimes action groups. You need to be careful with um, when you design for trucks um, because um, you've got to use that balance, of course, between the, um, what the local residents want and, of course, making sure that the uh, trucks can still get through. So, as it says there, careful design consideration can improve both local access for trucks and, of course, reduce conflicts with other, other road users. Uh, thank you for your time uh, today, and I'm sure I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.